Bell, Redman, Eats, Haywood. These are the names Porsche racing fans know like they know their own. Drivers who have carried the Porsche Motorsports brand to a podium finish at the world's great circuits. Shrines to automotive competition called Spa, Daytona, Sebring, and Le Mans. Who will be next? From where will the world's next great motorsport talent emerge? What names will race fans be chanting from the grandstands in years to come? Answering these questions is one aim of the Porsche Motorsport North America Young Driver Academy. Over the next two days, four young drivers from the U.S. and Canada will endure grueling on-track exercises and unexpected challenges. Their circuit time will include stints in the Porsche 911 Carrera S and Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car, the gold standard for production-based sports race cars. Barber Motorsports Park in Birmingham, Alabama. One of the most picturesque racing landscapes in the world. It's home to the Porsche Sport Driving School, as well as pro racing events like the Honda Indy Grand Prix and the Grand Am Porsche 250. It's here at Barber that participants in the Porsche Motorsport North America Young Driver Academy have gathered. Cooper McNeil, Sean Johnston, Kyle Marcelli, and Spencer Pickett. All are under 25 years old. All have excelled in their chosen racing series. For racers who've spent their formative years learning to maximize cornering speed, mastering the four-wheel drift takes some trial and error. The skid pad is just one of the events at the academy that will test their racing skills in unexpected ways. Don't worry, this is not, this is just to see if you can Adapt and fall directions. You know, it's not about it's not about drift. No, you're in here. You're all by yourself. Uh, is there a radio in here, Andrew? Yeah. So we'll give you a call uh, or a wave. But just take your time. Take uh, three, four minutes out there and just just feel it out. unique you know it's something you don't get to do every day you know we're all rookies at this um, and it's a ton of fun uh, you learn a lot about car control and uh, um, you know it just enhances our learning curve this whole this whole experience An integral part of Porsche's Young Driver Academy is Helmut Greiner, founder of the European Porsche Junior Program. It was Greiner who brought on board Porsche factory driver Patrick Long, once an up-and-coming young driver, now a winning competitor. Patrick, whose Porsche victories span the American Le Mans series, as well as Daytona and Le Mans, is among the judges at the Young Driver Academy. With elements of Europe's Porsche Junior program as a guide, Porsche designed its North America Young Driver Academy specifically with North American racing in mind. The objectives of the North American Academy are the same as they are in Europe to help and encourage promising young drivers to perform at the highest level of motor racing. Among the veteran drivers overseeing the young racer's progress is Hurley Haywood. Haywood's titles at Le Mans, Daytona and Sebring defined Porsche's endurance GT racing supremacy during the 1970s and 80s. Haywood and his fellow academy instructors will push the young drivers to be their best with valuable advice that can only come from many years racing at the championship level. 
Along with Hurley Haywood and Patrick Long are Andrew Davis, a Rolex Grand Am GT champion for Brumos Racing, and Porsche Sport Driving School instructor Jeff Perner. The Academy instructors will act both as judges and as instructors. Their primary objective is to push the drivers to perform under pressure in every aspect that competing in professional motorsports demands. Can these four young drivers, selected from North America's top feeder series, carry the racing torch to the next generation? That's what the Porsche Motorsport North America Young Driver Academy will find out. A well-rounded driver isn't just good behind the wheel. He also must have a solid grounding in motorsports knowledge, and in this case, Porsche heritage. It's one thing to manage the stress of a race. It's quite another to face down a 30-page pop quiz on racing history. To make matters worse, they have less than one and a half hours to finish it. I went through it and I didn't know the answers to every single question, so it's uh, certainly going to be a challenge and it's fun. It's fun to just learn sort of where you guys are at and to just get a little bit more of a measure of who you are based on what we just did and you know what you've done in racing. It touches on a, a little bit of everything, so uh, take it for what it's worth and uh, just know there's no right or wrong, just honest, straightforward and uh, have fun. Being a pro driver for Porsche also means representing yourself and your team to the media, often in front of a camera. To test their media fitness, the young drivers are sequestered in a side room unexpectedly for mock interviews. Seasoned racers like Hurley Haywood know that dealing with racing journalists and acting as team spokesperson is a skill that must be learned. And in the early days, I was not really comfortable with dealing with the media. I was kind of, I wasn't good at public speaking. I was, you know, I never knew what the question was gonna be, so I was always kind of timid. But I, I forced myself to learn the process. I forced myself to sort of understand what people wanted and to try to be informative and funny at the same time and not take myself too seriously. You sort of, you don't want to be too homogenized. You want to have a personality. You want to have something that people either like or dislike about you. And you, you, you don't want that to be an, you don't want that to override Porsche, but you want it to be something that's interesting. They're, they're choosing you for many reasons just besides your driving ability. Competition is the ultimate proving ground. We race to win and we race to learn and it's really in the opposite order. Our first priority from competition is learning. With classroom exercises out of the way, the four young drivers prepare for day two. They'll trade their pencils for racing suits and helmets and head out to the track. Today, of course, it's all about driving and that's what these guys are here for. But things aren't starting exactly right because it's raining. Our young drivers are really hoping that this is going to be their opportunity to shine. But when you come here, they're already nervous and they arrive at the track and it's wet. It's almost the worst situation because every opportunity to mess up is maximized in these kind of conditions. Rain. The racing action at Le Mans or the Nürburgring 24 doesn't stop when the skies open up. And at these storied races, a wet track is nearly as common as a dry one. And while racing in the wet adds another level of challenge, for these academy drivers, there may be no better environment in which to test their on-track skills. The Porsche 911 Carrera S. It's a car whose pure performance makes it an ideal training tool for young racers, even those who have proved themselves in prestigious feeder series. Sean Johnston, champion of the IMSA GT3 Cup Challenge. Cooper McNeil, champion of the ALMS GT Challenge. Kyle Marcelli, most wins at the IMSA GT3 Cup Canada. And Spencer Pickett, most wins at the USF 2000 Series. They've all raced in the rain before, but perhaps never under such close scrutiny, as academy instructors keep a close watch on how they manage the unpredictable traction of a wet race course. The instructors evaluate the driver's on-track progress, and then they turn up the heat. There's an unexpected guest on the track, 
as Hurley Haywood joins the traffic to test the driver's composure under fire. He's like, I'm gonna put a little pressure on them, see, see what they got. I wonder if they know it's him. Tell a lot. I can follow. Did any of them try to pull over and get you by, or they were no, all no, content no. to have you in their mirrors? Okay. Just, 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 I, I wouldn't pass. I just stay behind them. No, they're doing a hell of a job. I mean, they're keeping it in the box, which is all we asked for this morning. Uh, this track is tough on tires, and you can see why. You never yeah. really, you don't have enough time to cool them off. You're leaning on them a lot, a lot of those long duration carousel corners. So it, it works them pretty hard. So it's, they like to come test the tires here because it's hard on them. You gotta be consistent. You know, the, you're getting used to it. You got conditions that are, that are wet, which kind of throw it off. but. Being consistent is the whole key. When you get into the cup car, you've got to be doing the same thing lap after lap after lap. And I saw lots of variations. You know, sometimes you would um, be late on the turn in to turn five, and then it would throw you off, and you weren't able to keep on to the white line, so you would run away wide on the, on the exit. By the afternoon, the track begins to dry and traction improves. The drivers head to the GT3 cup cars. Each driver gets his own set of Michelin tires, and all of the cars have the same setup for the five on-track sessions that will push the driver's racing intelligence even further. Data says on, on all five laps here, the best was a zero, three zero point zero. Mm -hmm. The best here was a three zero point four. Mm -hmm. And on um, Sean, it was also a three zero point zero. So these, these two, the first group one, they pushed on used tires, and he was a couple behind, a couple times behind. But to me, lap times, if they're in the same half a second, it's pretty much. We're, we're, we're assessing a lot of stuff, so. but great job. Thank you. Thank you. To make it in the world of professional racing, where they must adapt to constantly changing variables, drivers must not only manage the pressure, but revel in it. It's not easy. And sometimes the stress overwhelms, leading to unexpected outcomes. On a sticker run, it should be a. Like a mid seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they'll go. Like. They'll go low eights right now yeah. on stickers. Yeah. Because now they know the track's not wet. And I'm not putting pressure on them to not. Yeah, that's what I. Mean. I mean, Sean this year was really within that one second margin. You Easily. Know? Yeah. yeah. Easily, it's been, and yeah, he'd go quicker than us in the time that we had to put our laps down. Yeah. You know, whatever lap I ran during test day, you know, they would always eclipse that. But they're, course. they're just, I just hope they keep on task because Sean just had a little off. Oh, he did. But didn't hit anything, just had a spin, came in, checked it over, so everything's good. Um, you know, Spencer's surprising the hell out of everybody. He's, you should see his data. You should really go good. Look at it. Just good exits. Know, better exits than anyone else. Good. Um, the and other then, places, he's, he's literally dumping all his time in the end of the back straight. He's just got that all screwed up. He knows that though? Yeah. Well, this is going to be, this going to be interesting.
a roll in third as he compressed out, but just getting the car to maybe help mm -hmm. rotate it. You, you can ask him, but I would stick with what you're doing. Your, your times are very good and they're very consistent, so okay. I wouldn't, I mean, you don't want to change things too, well, too, many, you, too many things. You, you don't want to change too many things, but you also want to manage your tires. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you're selecting lower gears like that, you're just putting more stress on the tire okay. and you're, you're horsing it around in that tight radius turn using the throttle to make your adjustments so you're just damaging yes, that rear absolutely. tire. So I would run, it, Be mindful. It, it's, it's always smoother, faster is smoother, and, and when, when you're in this low gear like that, you're just getting too, too active in this too much. track we want to know that they can take direction and sort of operate in a team environment. This morning I told them this is a theoretical endurance race and there are four drivers in the same team. Uh, they're not going to be super comfortable in the seat. They're not going to have their polished setup on the car. All the hills and, and insulation changes is really neat. There's not a lot of tracks that we race at that's up and down like that so much in the corners, maybe on the straightaways, but not so much really in the corners up and down in the braking zone. And I really like it. It's my first time here and I love the track. Hopefully I'll get to come back here. In pro racing, it's not just consistent driving that wins races. Drivers must be able to feel a car's on-track behavior and describe it to race engineers in mechanical terms. That's how racing teams can dial in the best setup. At the Academy, the four drivers are put through a rigorous exam, during which the car's setup changes unexpectedly. Drivers must identify and describe exactly what's been changed. In this case, it's a larger rear sway bar that leads to changes in how the car reacts in the corners. As they pull into pit lane, Patrick Long interrogates the drivers about their car's setup. As all pro drivers know, it's having this knowledge at their fingertips after a test session that separates the best from all the rest. You change the car and give them their set of tires. Their set of tires, um, before they were stickers with uh, quality pressures, now they're five, six laps old with uh, race pressure, mm -hmm. and we made a change also. Change. Rear bar. Just to see if they feel less understood. Less understood. I don't know if it was a factor of tire pressures getting hot or, no, or a change that was made. Um, for me, the rear of the car, the balance went backwards. I was getting a little more rotation going into the corners now. Um, a lot more rotation from before, and, and then power down coming off the corner, I was, I was getting wheel spin uh, easier than before. I mean, tires are used up a little more, and that could be a factor as well, but uh, that's Dude. where another kind of the direction went. Like I said, it wasn't as sharp as I'd like it to be, and then I noticed it. Just a tad more high speed oversteer on power, like mid corner to exit. Um, high speed like where? High speed like uh, coming out of the S's over here. Um, and then turn one, and then this even this uphill right here, that crest, that flat crest, was like flat, but it was like, whoop, okay. Um, but it, it turned in really good. Um, but I want a little bit more from the front, uh, a little more sharpness from the front. So, other than that, I thought it was pretty good. It was easy to drive. Good. Better, worse, same, different? Um, well, just a little worse because we're waiting on the front. 10-4. Yeah. Good job, man. Yeah, I felt like the car wasn't quite as hooked up in the rear on um, power down. So I noticed on the outlap, when the tires were cold, it was a little bit more pronounced. That you know, had a little bit more oversteer tendency, 
especially in the tighter corners where I had a little bit more uh, wheel in it, is I noticed that the car was more willing and more open to sort of rotating under under power. Um, you know, like the, the previous session, the car under power just the rear just felt great. Um, and you know, this first session was the first time that I felt on um, the exit of one a little bit at the exit of museum corner, just starting to see a little bit of uh, oversteer. And I don't know if that's just me pushing was a little it, bit harder. Was it, was it getting better through the session or worse? Um, From the balance side. It got, it got better through okay. the session, yeah. No, it was, I mean, by the end, I, I was adjusting to it and I was also thinking, trying to think in my head, like, so what, what could they have done? And I said, hey, screw that, just drive the car. And, but that was my experience. That at the end, it was better, and I did my best lap right at the end. Cool. You know, I'd made some small mistakes. I'm, I'm happy with the, the consistency of the times. You know, there's just, I think they all could have been right about 30s, except for I made small mistakes here and there. But you know, overall, the result was consistent times. But another round of mock interviews add another unexpected and stress-filled twist in the academy's day two program. As the drivers are cornered by the media, they are evaluated both on how clearly they communicate but also how they keep their cool under questioning. If I told them if they throw it off, this is their option if they left something out there. If they think there's more out there, we'll bleed them and let them go back out. And I mean, I, I wish I could have let him go two more laps, to tell you the truth. Well, let's, let's see what wrong. the pressures are, and if he wants to do three more, that's fine. This is good to show them their exits. He kind of balls it up right here. Who is that? Owen. Owen. Or I can say we can. No, that's all right to show them that. No, I think it's better to show them this because it's a better example of exits and things. So if once we download, did, he's going to pull this right now or did he already do that? Okay. Uh, well, we'll pull them all and take a breather. So as you can see, all the drivers did an excellent job in really tricky conditions. And now they're sitting there behind me, waiting to go into the truck individually to review their data with Andrew. Of course, it's very tricky what they did. Think about it. They were out there on a greasy racetrack in front of their peer group with an awful lot at stake under the watchful eyes of everyone from Porsche Cars North America, AG Group, and Porsche Motorsport. And they really excel. It's almost impossible to put a blade of grass between all their performance. But remember, this is an evaluation on lots of things. There is no clear winner or loser, but it's on their psychological profile, how they did with Barbara and I in the media training, and of course their general integration. Will they fit into the Porsche family? So perhaps to find out a bit more of how they did, we'll ask the experts. Just at the edge of being slippery, so all of them did, very, did a very good job. Very impressive uh, how the times really dropped uh, lap by lap. Um, considering that these cars are a little bit different from the ones they usually drive, we have uh, ABS in the cars, we have a slightly different setup here, so and, and one of them has never driven a cup car before on, on this track, so interesting. Um, not only that, that conditions, but also being watched by so many people. Uh, you know, we all take the times, we all watch them. So uh, I'm really impressed how cool they were over the, the whole morning today. So well done. I look forward to the next stint when we go out again, and hopefully it's going to be dry still. First day was really about assessing who they are, um, giving them something to take away with this. It's not just about judging them or grading them, but giving them uh, some expert advice from media and psychological coaches on uh, where they're at in, in, in the game of all this. Uh, I think Porsche puts a lot of heart into uh, who their drivers are away from the track, uh, out of the race car as well. We also want to be clear that we're doing something different than the typical gong show where you give the guys a racetrack for two days and say, let's see who's the fastest driver. Uh, there is no winner, there is no loser. Ultimately, these four guys are going to go away with an assessment and a recommendation from Jens and Helmut um, where we think they should be. 
Well, you know, when, when I started, it was just a matter of how fast I was in the car. All the rest of the stuff, how media savvy I was, didn't really make any difference. It, I spoke with my foot. Nowadays, you have to speak with your foot, but you also have to play so many different other roles. And I'm so impressed with how savvy these guys are. They're, they're media savvy, they're very articulate, and they come into this arena where all the eyes are looking at them, and they're all vying for a, a spot in the Porsche, you know, family. And they are just as cool as cucumbers. You know, they don't get ruffled. They don't. They don't sort of miss a beat. And inside of them, their their stomachs are just turning. I know what that feels like. But on the outside, they're just cool and calm. And that's really what we're looking for from a racing driver is, you know, calm under pressure. And these guys are doing a super job. And then the two days come to a close. In the end, here at Viber Motorsports Park, it's not about anointing a winner or consoling a loser. The Porsche Motorsport North America Young Driver Academy has a single aim. That is steering young racers with the greatest potential toward a long and fruitful career in sports car racing. And by all appearances, these four young drivers are on their way. During the briefing this morning, Patrick said you're gonna be an endurance racing team and you really behaved like a team. Working together, helping each other uh, in a very tense environment. We're all impressed by how cool you've been with all of us watching you every move during the last two, two days. So well done, congratulations. The times were very close um, and what was good to see was not only that the times between you were close, um, it was also good to see that the times were going down lap by lap to a point where they actually then were very constant, which is each of you. It shows that you find your, your level where you feel confident, you didn't overdrive the car, we had no damages on anything, um, so they really were Taking, taking attention, taking it seriously, very professional. We want to take some time to reflect on that, um, to assess the data and the information we, we got from that, and then make an assessment for each of you, which we would like to share with you in the next two weeks. We will be in touch, Patrick and myself, uh, to make sure that you get a fair assessment and also a recommendation where we would recommend you to go from here with what we've seen what the expertise we brought in um, brought up to the table.